Hey guys, it's Jeff Farina with PocketNow.com. In our first unboxing video of the Samsung Wave, we only briefly touched upon what BADA is as an operating system. So now what we're going to do is we're kind of going to give you a basic overview of the navigation through the system, kind of give you a tour, what it can offer, that sort of thing. We're also going to show you the email application and the camera and video recording application. Let's go ahead and get to that. <laughs> Alright, and we're back, and one of the main points of this video here is just going to be kind of to give you an overview of the BADA operating system on the Samsung Wave. Now, as I've said before, Samsung actually created this operating system from the ground up to kind of revolve around what they wanted it to be. So, I'm going to go ahead and uh, swipe to unlock the screen here. Now, it's going to be kind of tough to tell, but basically the way this operating system works is you're going to have screens. So, this is the, the first screen here. Second screen here, as you can see, there's actually a number up here at the top that actually corresponds to which screen that I am on. So second screen, third screen, fourth screen, fifth screen. You can do up to 10 screens. And the way you can add more is you can just keep adding widgets to here. These widgets are just like a widget on a different operating system. You can just come right through, click which one you want, drag it right onto the screen itself. And now it's going to ask you, this is the BBC player, so it's going to ask you to kind of accept the offer, accept the terms and conditions more or less. And from here you can keep dragging this if you want to to the next screen over. There's also a very cool way you can do this as well. You can turn on the side here. Better yet, if you go into the widget mode, you can turn the actual screen on the side here. And this is going to give you a almost like a card type view of all of your pages. And then from here we can keep going over and we can add another screen. Another screen, it'll go up to 10 screens total. This is where you can also erase the screens. As you see, if we go all the way over to the end, there is number 10. So 10 screens total. I'll go in a little further so you can see a little bit better. 10 screens total for this guy. Now, one of the things you probably saw, and I'll actually go back to the, the normal view. One of the things that you likely saw was, this is my home page. Very simple. I'm going to press the done button here. I left my homepage simple for a few different reasons. One, there unfortunately aren't very many widgets available for Bada currently. It is a very new operating system. It's actually brand new. So there's only so much customization you can do with it. So on my home screen here, I have the Google search, the Google Maps with the mail. Sliding over, I have my Gmail. From there, I have what's called the daily briefing. That's going to be the Samsung daily briefing. It's built right in, once again, to Bada basically gives you some options such as weather, stock quotes, AP Mobile, which is the associated press. So for example, if I come here and actually press this article, there you see the daily briefing starting right up. And now I can actually pick a news article here. It's going to load the website. As you can see, this is the browser functionality. So it's going to load, load the website here. And here's the article. Now it has pinch to zoom, multi-touch built right in. So I can zoom very, very smooth as you can see. And I'm all set. You can also double tap to zoom right back out. But again, the pinch to zoom in and out is very smooth and very, very polished. Now, what you can also do is press the end button here to go back to your home. We'll keep on swiping. We're going to have the calendar, the Samsung apps itself, which I'll also get into. This is basically your most visited and so on and so forth. Now, I will give you a little overview of the widgets that are available currently. Just so you can kind of see them. I'll, I'll actually swipe through. So we have the network info, birthdays. Days themselves, clocks, uh, I, I'll, I will skip a few, uh, the friend updates, the buddies that are online now with the chat and that sort of thing. Once again, the BBC, yellowpages.com, the wallpapers, music store, dual clock, etc., etc. Now, I'm going to go back here. One of the main things about this operating system is going to be the notification bar. It reminds me a lot of the WebOS notification bar. Now, if we swipe this down, here it's going to be right here, as you can tell. The Wi-Fi is on. It's going to also give you the quick buttons for Bluetooth and the silent mode. And it's telling me currently that I have one notification, which is going to be for the email. So I can actually clear that if I want to. But what's very cool about this is we'll press the end button and we'll press the center button here, which will bring up the main menu for all of your apps that you have on here. As you can see, we have logs, social hub, music player, etc., etc. There's actually about two and a half pages of apps on here by default. The main some of the main ones to actually take notice of are Facebook and Twitter and YouTube, which I will go into for the next video. Right now, however, what we're going to do is going to go into the music player. It does have one song on here, which is the Samsung Beyond song, and I'm going to start playing this song. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. The song is now playing. I press the end button here. 
brings me back to the home. So I can go into a different application. For example, I can press mail here. It's now opening up the Gmail that I can go right to the gmail.com instead of using the app. The main thing here to see though, is I can drag the notification bar down once again, and I now have the music player built right into the notification bar. So I can pause this song right in the actual notification bar. That is very smooth, that is very slick, something that you know Android and a lot of the other systems need. In my opinion, that's it's a very good uh, offering. Some of the other ones, again, I'm going to go back by pressing this home button here. We're going to go to the settings. Just to kind of give you a brief overview of what these settings allow you to do. As you can see, you have options like flight mode, connectivity, the sound profiles, display, and the light. Now, the display, I only have the brightness right now at 6. It will go up to 10, which is very, very, very bright. I'm going to turn it back down. Uh, you can change your theme. I only have one theme on here right now. You can download more, though, from the App Store or from the Samsung Store, which I will show you uh, on the next video. But for now, we're going to press the Cancel button to go back. You have your general settings, which are going to be anything from the type of keyboard, the language, the touch controls, the notification types, that sort of thing, as well as date, time, applications, widgets, for example. One of the main things that I want to touch on, though, are going to be applications here. So these are your application settings, calling, messaging, email, etc. But the main one that I want to touch on is the internet. As you can see here, we have a preferences button. I don't know if you can tell right there, but that says run flash. That is key. I'm going to touch on flash on the second video for the software overview, but that is very nice. The fact that the browser has the ability to run the flash based on that preference. I will warn you ahead of time, this is not on by default. I had to actually go in and turn it on myself. I'm going to press cancel again here. Again, you have your Samsung apps. These are basically all of the application settings once again. Social networking is big because we do have, once again, the Twitter and the Facebook integration, which I will show you. Security, memory, about the phone itself, which will kind of give you system info, shows you that it's BATA 1.0, and all of that fun stuff. Also tell you how much battery is remaining. And the CPU usage, I'm only using 1% here, just kind of being idle. So we're going to go ahead and go back. The memory, as you can tell here, it's checking the status. It's how much free memory there is right now. This is simply phone memory. There is no card in this phone as of right now. Another feature I do want to touch on is the camera. Now, I took a sample clip earlier with the camcorder, which will actually record, if I press the settings button here, will record in up to 720p if you'd like, which is very nice. So I'm going to go ahead and press this back arrow. Right now I'm going to play a video that I recorded earlier by putting the play button down here in the bottom right corner. Now I took this video of my dog chasing after a ball. Now I'm hoping this camera will pick up the clarity of the 720p and the, the color accuracy. I'm going to go ahead and press play here. This is to show the frames per second with this camera. Now he's going he's gonna to throw it one more time. You'll see him run by. And granted, this, is, this was taken at night with indoor lights. However, it wasn't exactly the brightest in the area that it was in. Now, as you can see, there's a little bit of stutter in the playback. However, the quality is just phenomenal. The playback quality of that video is phenomenal. I'm going to go back into the camera here. We do have the ability to put the flash on. I'm going to go into the camera now by pressing this top left button here. Now we're in the camera mode. And you can actually, as you can tell right there, press and hold screen to focus. So you can actually click here, and it'll focus on this area. And press up here, and it'll focus on that area. Now we have an autofocus. It's already on. You have macro and you have face detection. Now I, I will tell you the macro, actually better yet. Let's give you a, a test right here. So we have some small, I actually have a Best Buy receipt right here. Now, by holding this close, looks pretty good. If we go to macro here, we can actually see the writing from this camera on the actual phone itself. So you can actually read the Best Buy receipts writing, which is held pretty close to the phone. So by turning on the macro, you're able to get a lot. However, you know, it's a little bit blurrier this far away. So what you do is you just press the autofocus settings, and there you go. It's back to normal. 
You can adjust your exposure levels. Again, you can do your flash. You can do on, off, auto. We'll put it on on. I'll take a quick picture. As you saw, it's a pretty bright flash. You do have your shooting modes. You can do continuous, vintage, panorama. There's a lot you can do with this camera. You can see we have a resolution button. As you can see, it's pretty high resolution, especially on a phone. It's set as high as it goes. That's the 5 megapixels right there. Now, one last thing I do want to touch on within the Bada operating system is going to be the email support and the email integration. I personally am a Gmail user, as you saw earlier. I actually have the Gmail widget here, which now has all of my emails in it. However, if we go to the menu button here in the middle, I usually use this email application here. It's a little bit easier for me. Now, I haven't actually gone through and fixed all of my emails yet, as you can kind of see. But let's say we scroll down here. Just pick any random email. Let's pick this one from PlayOn. So by default, the email is not going to actually download all of the information, all of the HTML code. It's just going to give you the recipients and the subject, which is a little annoying, a little, um, I'm just puzzled why they would do that. So you have to actually go into the settings here, go to settings, and this is basically where you would actually enable it to download the attachment and the HTML code by default. Now, viewing the emails, you can see here, is actually fairly nice. You can you pinch the zoom just like on, on many, many phones out there, nothing in particular, but it's a very fluid operation. The moving left and right, again, once again, is very, very fluid. If you want to reply, just press the reply button. We can do all, we can do just the sender. I'm going to do just the sender because for some reason they put everyone in there. And now I can go ahead and type right here. I'm just picking anything random. And as you can see there, it is giving us the auto predict or the spell correction. So that isn't the strongest with this phone. It's a little slow at times, but it does happen when you need it to, which is good. One thing I do want to note is also the push email, at least for Gmail, is not supported right off the bat. You have to actually go in just like the downloading of the attachments and manually configure it. So, again, a little puzzling as to why that is. Uh, it is very capable of doing push with all different types of email, including Gmail and Exchange. However, I had to actually go in and search for it myself and find out how to do it. Bada as, as a whole is a great start for Samsung. What I will do in the next video, press the middle button here, I'm going to go over some of the other aspects of Bada, which is going to be your social networking. So I'm going to go over your Facebook, your Twitter. Uh, of course, I'll touch on YouTube as well. And then some of the games. This is going to come with Asphalt 5 on here by default. There's also many, many more games, which I will go into. And then I'm also going to talk about Flash and a little, the browser itself. The browser is a very big piece to the bot operating system and it's it's unproven at this point and we're really going to kind of analyze that and see how it works so once again everyone stay tuned if you like this video give us a thumbs up and also subscribe if you're interested in seeing the other videos of the samsung wave and many more to come thank you for watching everyone